already know how crypto is it's going to be ups and downs but the market is looking really really good right now right um we just got the job data back we just got the job data back so um job market actually looking strong but some people say the job market ain't as strong as the numbers say so you know how that go right but at the end of the day what is Powell going to be doing? Powell going to be looking at the data, right? He's going to look at that job report and he's going to be like, we can't cut the rates yet because the economy is still strong. And then I was just looking at the CME report and a chance of not having a Fed cut has rose into 95%. So we're still closing on that window of three federal rate cuts. Now, I wouldn't be surprised um, as we get a little bit closer towards Q4 and the end of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if... You know what I mean? Let me put my computer back on because I want to be looking at the screen while I'm talking to you guys. But I wouldn't be surprised if um, the those last three months, one of those months, they decide to pause the rate cuts only because I think that Jay Powell is being petty and it, he's probably not liking the attacks, the verbal attacks, allegedly, um, that Trump is putting out there about him. But as far as focus, my focus specifically is AI. Um, I like the machine economy and what's going over there with Peak. I was looking at um, my stable coins and I was um, thinking about adding to my Peak uh, holdings, but also my ZBCN holdings because I did see that Zebek is going through a correction, which is good because I personally know how massive the payroll industry is and the fact that they are disrupting a trillion dollar industry, they just got to capture like 0.01% of that industry and we're going to make a boatload of money. Um, I'm also embedded into the Tau ecosystem following subnets 56, uh, gradient subnet 93, Bitcast, uh, subnet 73, Metadash. I did a few videos on this, guys. Make sure you go check out my previous videos if you want to know exactly what those subnets are. But subnets in the ecosystem the tower ecosystem makes sense for me because i'm seeing the smart money right i'm seeing these stocks literally adding tau to its treasuries and how i view tau i view tau as bitcoin holders the og bitcoin holders viewed bitcoin when it was less than one thousand dollars this is how massive i believe that tau could become because of ai literally if something groundbreaking some type of breakthrough happens with agi and artificial intelligence and it's built on tau now we got to change our entire uh you know thesis on how we view the potential of tau and where it could possibly go so i'm looking at i know people be like ethereum can go to ten thousand and stuff like that xrp can go to ten thousand but the one token that deep down in my heart can i truly believe can hit five digits is the tensor tau because those tokenomics are so similar to Bitcoin when you look at the 21 million cap. So with that being said, very, very bullish on AI. Um, Ayuki and Peak for machine learning and machine economy. You got to think about uh, physical rate robots. They need a playground. They need a playground that's made for them and for them only. And with this big, beautiful bill coming in, if you go look at some of the fine print and where some of that capital and liquidity will be rolling, it's going to be rolling into the tech sector. It's going to be rolling into the infrastructure of AI. And it was named, um, I don't want to say name drop, but um, if you look at it, there's a few things that lean it towards infrastructure of AI, like cloud infrastructure, um, compute power. These are all the things that we need to, uh, uh, you know, consistently... Um, continue to usher the artificial intelligence movement and when you think about it right when you think about compute powder and you think about cloud storage they said like right now google open ai and google is it takes like one billion a year to run it because of the compute powder and the lack thereof of cloud storage next year because of ai has been getting so adopted and this is an example of why ai or how ai is being adopted right um this year it's costing these ai companies um one billion to actually run these AI models next year because so many people are going to be using AI is going to cost them 10 billion the year after that you're probably looking at what a hundred billion because AI probably gonna be walking literally walking right I was watching some Chinese soccer game and they literally created a league of humanoid robots so like the, and, and it's sad to say because I'm, I'm seeing like, and I had a conversation, I don't want to get into why I think like 
people are acting crazy or we in the world of zombies but like customer service sucks so i'm not surprised that they're going to be pushing artificial intelligence literally everywhere and then when you wake up like everybody is already using any smart person that's locked in to where the world is going in for the next five to ten years is locked in into artificial intelligence not just as a investor but also as a consumer um or builder whatever you want to be so um i'm focused on that sector because if this is truly the last leg of the crypto bull run i want to make sure i'm in the hottest narratives meme coins ai rw play um rwa and of course d pin and stuff like that so it is what it is. I mean, AI can go anywhere, right? You can say AI gaming. You can say AI deep in. You can say um, DeFi AI, um, decentralized physical robots, um, decentralized science. They, they use artificial intelligence. There's some really good projects out there right now, like AXGT. That's looking really, really good. But I think a lot of people are going to sleep on Tao's ecosystem because we're already starting to see all that money roll in as far as smart money. And not a lot of that money has rolled in into detail yet. So when you think about the 128 subnets, it's only 128. Any expert, DeFi expert, when you're looking at that, you're like, okay, I can go to Solana and I got to go through 1 million tokens just to find a diamond in a bunch. Or I can go hang around BitTensor's ecosystem, lock in, do as much research on these 128 subnets and pick five of them that I truly believe have massive potential and print, print, print and earn as much tile as you can. There's no, and that's what I'm saying. Once you get into these ecosystems, opportunities start opening, right? Look what happened to Jerry Bansfield when he started doing ICP. Now I'm like really embedded in the Tao ecosystem, I'm getting a chance to meet cool people, lock in with some of the owners of these subnets and really see you know the infrastructure point of view of ai and how all of this stuff is being built and it's not just helping from a monetary perspective it's also helping from as far as learning man learning 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 the best thing that you can do in crypto is try to pick up as much knowledge as you can and connect with as much people as you can. You don't got to be friends or nothing like that, but networking, right? Um, putting yourself out there, getting in these groups, um, understanding because what this does is it allows you to uh, put yourself in a position to have first movers advantage. The average normie, they not in telegram groups. They not in these circles. They not in these discourse, these patrons. So they don't know what's going on. They're going to buy the first thing that gets shielded to them off TikTok on these centralized exchanges. I also, one more thing before I go, centralized exchanges, man, like find you a gem that's listed on every centralized exchange. What I would do if I was new into crypto, I was a normie and you asked me, well, Millie, what is the best way I can make money in crypto? Um, but a very, at least volatility as possible. What I would do is I would go find me the coin that's listed on all five of the top centralized exchanges. I'm talking Crypto.com, Robinhood, Coinbase, and whatever the other ones are. Binance, Uphold, Gemini, whatever the ones you use, right? I would go look, in, but specifically Robinhood, Coinbase, Crypto.com, and whatever the other top one is, right? And I'm going to go find the the the... The token that's listed on all of these exchanges but has the lowest market cap and the most hype around it. And that's what I would buy, right? So you want to make sure it checks off five top exchanges. It has a lit community and it has the lowest market cap on the platform. Because when normies come in, they just look at these exchanges, right? And the first thing they're going to see is people shilling tokens that's listed on centralized exchanges. Well, if you can already front run that by buying the, the token on the centralized exchange that has the lowest market cap, but has the most accessibility, well, now you're really limiting that volatility and risk because they're listed on the really, really good exchanges. So, you know, it's a good chance it's not a scam, but you're also maximizing your potential because you're buying the token that has the lowest market cap, but has the most accessibility. Think about this strategy. I'm going to just leave it at that. I don't want to make this video too long. I was doing my little workout. I'm going to get back to my workout. And, um, yeah, today is a hoop, hoop day in boxing. So I'll be doing some hooping. I'll be doing some boxing. Um, remember, health is wealth. Tell a family member you love them today. It's your boy, Crypto Millie, checking in with another one. I'll see you in the next one.